Good morning, folks. We've got a nice slate of news today with the top story leading into a bit of disaster timeline discussion. We're going to start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find that the last 24 hours on the sun were very calm. We have bright crackling active regions on the south at the periphery of the coronal hole, but they're not flaring. The coronal hole itself is somewhat patchy, rather than a solidly formed IMF opening. We'll see if it still musters strong solar wind. Quick look at the sunspot magnetism, still split, and not developing in size or umbral number either. It's why they're not flaring. And while flare potential is low, morphology is continuing and it will continue to be monitored today as it doesn't take much. The solar wind is finally backing off from the last intensified stream, and the geomagnetic storms are over as well. We've still got more streams possible from the coronal holes, but thus far, they have been mid-level strength only. Let's head out to space next for a view in wavelengths our eyes don't see so well. Specifically here, it's going to be the subtle shades in the infrared. The focus on infrared from Roman and Webb in the wake of Spitzer is indicative of their recognition of the importance of finally finding all the dust that re-emits photoionizing light taken in. The idea is that with double the eyes on the shorter wavelength infrared, they will be able to properly interpret the longer wavelength views delivered by Webb, kind of like a calibrator. Up next, we've got an interesting paper on the January 2014 solar flares and solar energetic particle events. The interplanetary magnetic field connecting Earth to Sun was struck directly by the solar flares and CMEs, allowing high-energy protons to surge along the field, bypass Earth's weakening magnetic field, and directly pound the northern polar cusp. These surges that sneak past the field and deliver the biggest particle heating events from the Sun also destroy ozone. The interesting thing about this paper is they're able to use the ionized helium and iron views of the sun to notice exactly where the proton surge came from. It's the crackling areas of the chromosphere before those looping arch arcade fields populate the corona. Folks, now that we know that UAH and Dr. Spencer deliver the climate updates before NOAA, I think we'll just continue toe-stepping with them while possible. Once again, February was a bit lower with the last few months. I can tell you that if these coronal holes continue the high speed streams or if we get some CMEs in there as well, March numbers should jump up quite a bit. That's how solar forcing works, especially coming off the chill of sunspot minimum. As you can see, the single greatest temperature anomaly was the jet dip and polar vortex event that struck the United States and Canada. Otherwise, a relatively normal month of a degree up or down from normal. Couple quick solar forcing notes here as long-term trends throughout the Holocene are linked to the sun in China. The solar modulation of galactic cosmic rays is what modulates the decadal cloud patterns and the short-term global content with the four bush decreases. Turns out it's kind of important for this planet's self-regulation toolbox. And last but not least, a study on what the aurora and polar cap do in magnetic reversals and other setups of the field and excursion. From larger auroral excitements from solar wind to a splitting of the auroral presentation into smaller subpoles. The same warning signs the ancients had will signal to us when the time is near as well. And so let's get a nice little reminder of the timelines provided humans don't kill each other before this. With the weakening field of Earth, I am not 100% confident that our electrified society will survive the sunspot maximum. It's blatantly obvious here, even in the ramping up stage, this cycle will not fail. Grand minimum will wait. And that means CME risk to taking us back to the Stone Age. About one in four chance we go down here. If not, luckily the sun should be heading downward further into grand minimum not long afterwards. Of course, this brings its own challenges as a near permanent La Nina and negative NAO would make winters abysmal in the north. Of course, the hardest part of this to gauge is when the magnetic reversal, the actual excursion flip of the field, will occur. We know there were accelerations in 1859 and around the 1990s, taking us from losing 5% per century to 5% per decade. We've got no new updates on percentages with the 2015 and 2017 accelerations, but the range with continued acceleration versus stable decline is about there at the bottom, pretty much as lucky as we could hope to get. We greatly appreciate your support. If this is new to you, the disaster playlists are on our channel homepage and at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.